Hi, this is Thunder Yi from BorderWolf.com and welcome to our versus battle. Trying to find out which is the best Samsung Galaxy S2 device. Is it the Galaxy S2 from T-Mobile? Is it the AT&T Galaxy S2? Or is it the Sprint Epic 4G Touch? So we're gonna check all of them out. Yes, all three devices I know. Got a couple here in my hands. And we'll see which is the best Galaxy S2 device on the market in the US. So let's jump in and check out the review. All right, so we have the three Galaxy S2 devices for each of the carriers. And for uh, purposes of differentiation, so we know each one, AT&T will be in the middle, T-Mobile is going to be on the right, and Sprint's going to be on the left. So let's first look at the at hardware and see the hardware differences we have each device. Now, if you take a look at both, uh, the Sprint and the T-Mobile versions kind of look similar in design, but you can tell already that the T-Mobile version has chrome finishing just like it does with the at t version on the edges, although this is a 4.52 inch screen, as well as the Sprint version is a 4.52 inch screen. So we'll put that aside. at t version is different because it's 4.3 inches, and so it's definitely the smaller version out of all three. Now if we put them side by side, put at t in the middle again, you can see the differences there. You can see how small the at t version is in comparison. You can also see the finishing. So for instance, the back of the Sprint version has this nice uh, metal finish and the back cover goes from the top to almost the bottom where you have that speaker there. The at t version, the back goes all the way from the top again to this port where you have the speaker. And on the T-Mobile uh, version, the back cover covers the whole device. Now all of them have 16 gigabytes of internal storage. Um, which is expanded to 32 by micro SD. These are the two GSM versions, the AT&T and the T-Mobile version. Then we have a C CDMA version with um, <clears throat> Sprint. So those are the hardware things. Hardware similarities, they all have front-facing cameras. You can see that, all two megapixel front-facing cameras. These are Super AMOLED Plus screens. So these are very sharp, crisp uh, uh, screens. All have touch-sensitive buttons here. At the bottom, you can see that they're clearly, they all have the Samsung logo on the front of the device in some way or the other, Sprint's on the top, uh, AT&T and T-Mobile is at the bottom, and AT&T Mobile uh, versions, T-Mobile versions have the AT&T logo at the top. At the rear of both devices, of all three devices, sorry, you do have a nice 8 megapixel camera, um, same camera, same lens with LED flash at the back, have the Galaxy S2 logo across all of them. Sprint is the only one that has the Sprint logo at the back of the device. All of them have a power button on the right hand side, you can see it there with T-Mobile, you can see it here with AT&T, and you can see it here with the Sprint version. Of course, volume toggles on the left and 3.5 mm jack on the right. So those are things you notice similarities and differences in the hardware. Let's go into software. So in the software, you can just take a look at all three devices, turn all of them on. Looking at software, they all are running some version of TouchWiz. Um, actually, <clears throat> All right, so let's go into software. So with software, you can see they're all running TouchWiz 4.0. You have the quick scroll function with all four devices, uh, with all three devices, sorry, I keep saying four. You do have the, um, of course, resizable widgets. So I can tap that and I can resize it. I can also move in, tap this widget here. Actually, sorry, that's the T-Mobile widget. You can resize all widgets. You can resize widgets. I just picked the wrong ones there. All of them have resizable widgets, which you can actually resize widgets on all uh, of the devices. Again, this version touch with uh, 4.0. Now, if we go into the menu, what version of Android they are running? There are some differences. You can see here, <clears throat> Sprint version is running Android 2.3.4, AT&T 2.3.4 and T-Mobile 2.3.5. So T-Mobile is running the most current and latest version of Android 2.3.5. Uh, when it comes to now differences you see in software, here are some things that are different. First of all, the Sprint version has the Sprint ID, which allows you to install Sprint ID packs and you can actually install a clean pack which gives you stock Android. So you see I'm running actually stock Android on here. 
the uh, T-Mobile and AT&T versions do not have that. You also have the um, you also have the on the on the uh, T-Mobile version. What you have here is you have a lot of T-Mobile pre-installed apps. Same thing, of course, with AT&T and Sprint. Although within Sprint and AT&T versions, you can uninstall those uh, pre-installed apps uh, quite quickly. So that's something to note. So all versions of um, the Samsung Galaxy S2 on Sprint, AT&T, and T-Mobile are running TouchWiz 4.0. You do have the quick scroll feature on all three versions. You also have the ability to resize the widgets on all three. Uh, you have that quick scroll feature again also in your app tray. You can see that there. Now, they all have some kind of pre-installed software from Sprint, AT&T, and T-Mobile. Differences here is that on Sprint and AT&T, you can uninstall the, the uh, pre-installed apps. On T-Mobile, you cannot do that. They also run in different versions of Android uh, also on here. So if you hit the menu button, you're going to settings, about phone. You can see Sprint version is running Android 2.3.4. AT&T version is running Android 2.3.4 and T-Mobile is running Android 2.3.5, which is the latest version of Android you have on the system. Some other differences you have here with the OS is that Sprint also has a Sprint ID packs where you can actually install different ID packs. And in this case, you can install a clean ID pack, which will give you basically, uh, which will run like stock Android um, 2.3 um, instead of having an overlay on there. So that's something to know for Sprint, use, Sprint users. You can also take screenshots on all three devices. Simple process is actually by holding down the, the power and the home key together. You take a screenshot there, you can see that. Do that here also again. And I can do that here again on the Sprint version. Quick one there. One second. So yeah, you can do it on all three versions. You can take a uh, screenshots on all three versions of um, Samsung Galaxy S2. They will all have eight megapixel camera, and the camera app is pretty much the same across the devices. Some differences you find also is actually with Google Talk. Uh, with Google Talk on this on the uh, T-Mobile version, there is no video chat uh, function, as you can see there. Uh, but on the AT&T version, as well as the Sprint version, you can video chat. You can also see the video chat icon up there. So that's something to note. Uh, it's same thing also on the Sprint version. So the uh, T-Mobile version is actually gimped with that. Uh, it will come later with a software update, but that's not available at the moment. Two, one. All right, so you can see I've just run the bench uh, benchmarks for all three devices. I've cleared the memory and also closed all programs that are running. On the Sprint version, benchmark uh, for the device is 3266. AT&T is at 3339. And T-Mobile is at 2768. Now, the highest I've got for T-Mobile is about 3001. But I've, always, I've got a lot, of lower, a lot of lower benchmark scores. Now, the Sprint and AT&T versions are both running Samsung's uh, own processor, dual-core processor here, and this T-Mobile version is running a Qualcomm chip. So take it as you will to say if this is a slower chip or doesn't function as fast, but those are the quadrant scores, of course, which uh, have a lot of uh, determining factors and should not be taken as real test scores to uh, indicate system performance overall. So those are quadrant scores for you guys. You guys... Uh, We'll add screenshots to this so you guys can check it out and see for yourself. Um, now we'll be doing a speed test.
All right, so I'm about to do the speed test with all three devices. Sprint here on the left, AT&T in the middle, and T-Mobile's on the far right. You see, we have the Sprint 4G network on, which is Sprint's 4G WiMAX network. AT&T is running on uh, HSPA Plus network at 40 megabits per second, and the T-Mobile Galaxy S2 is a 42 megabit per second device. So let's start the test on all three and see what we get. So on the first run, uh, Timo was the fastest. It gave us about 15.2 megabits per second. AT&T did 2.93 megabits per second on download. And um, I believe Sprint is at 0.9. We'll just do one more test and restart this. That was communication error, so we'll try that again. Restart, restart. Well, that restarts again. Uh, T-Mobile just did 17.23, AT&T did 3.10 megabits per second, and um, it looks like uh, Sprint Network is actually lagging over here. Again, this is not an indication of how fast the network is, it just depends on the area and location with 4G coverage. With 3G, with Sprint, I was doing about one, 1 1.5 megabits per second. So. Take it as you will. This is not an indication of the network itself, but just the location. And this is within the Boston area. So it, uh, the winner here is T-Mobile with because this is a 42 megabit per second device. I'm pushing speeds upwards of uh, 15 megabits per second, uh, close to matching LGE speed. So that's something nice to have and shows that the T-Mobile version of the uh, Galaxy S2 is actually pretty fast on its network. All right, so a lot of people have asked about web browsing, which I say it's the same across all devices. But I've tried to shut down the uh, wireless networks so that you get, I'm using Wi-Fi in all three, and I am going to open up um, browser on all three devices. If I could find it here on the Sprint version. I wonder why I threw the browser. I think I just passed it. Anyway, so let's go ahead and open up uh, the web browser. As you can see, the browser is pretty much the same on all devices. We're going to go to our favorite site, Board at Work, first on the uh, Sprint version. Board of work there, see if that finds it for us. No, it takes us to we can see the browser speeds as I do a Google search for border work and it pretty much comes up uh, pretty fast. So let's do that. And it's there. So uh, you guys wanted a browser test, here you have it. I'm gonna type these two first. You can see the browser speeds. It's pretty much the same. Uh, this, of course, is not a clinical uh, way of showing how fast a browser is, but you can see it renders everything pretty much at the same speed. Um, of course, you can pinch the zoom on all three browsers. Uh, they do play Flash. Hi, this is Sunny from BorderWorld.com, and we're taking a So you can see it plays flash and you can see all the prompts come up. So uh, browser is pretty much the same. Uh, there you have it. So please do not complain about the browser again. All right. And finally, the last and most important part of uh, this device uh, comparison is battery life. Um, <clears throat> with all three devices, it's hard for me to show this on camera, but with all three devices, uh, again, 
take in mind that these two here, the Sprint and the at t version, use the same processor, a Samsung uh, processor, and then this is a T-Mobile version that uses a Qualcomm 1.5 gigahertz uh, processor. Uh, I found out that I got the best battery life from the Sprint version, uh, probably about 14 to maybe 16 hours, um, more on the 60, towards the 16 hour range. at t version was about 12 to 14, and T-Mobile version was between 8 and 10 hours. Um, although if you look at it, it runs the same touch with software, has the same settings. Uh, the main difference here is, is the chip in there. So that is something that does hold this device back. Another thing that also differentiates is that the Sprint version does have an LED indicator right here on the right-hand side. You can't see that until you get a message or something. at t and um, Sprint versions do, uh, at t and T-Mobile versions do not have an LED indicator. Uh, so once you plug in your charger on any of these three devices, only the Sprint version will actually light up with the indicator because at t and T-Mobile versions do not have an indicator on the device. So that is uh, pretty much it. So let's round up this review and see what we think, uh, which is the best Samsung Galaxy S2 device on, so in the US. So you've seen our comparison of all the uh, Samsung Galaxy S2 devices. We have the Sprint version here, the Epic 4G Touch, at t Samsung Galaxy S2, and of course the T-Mobile Samsung Galaxy S2 here. Now you're wondering which is the best device. Now we've gone through a couple of things. We've seen the benchmarks, we've seen the speed tests, we've seen the differences between uh, uh, what we have in touch with, as well as overall functionality. And I think the overall best device is the Sprint version. Um, first of all, it does have the longest battery life of all three, as I mentioned, 16 to four, uh, 14 to 16 hours in total. Uh, you also have the Sprint ID pack, which actually plays a large role in helping you uh, switch to stock Android if you want to, which is pretty cool. I like that uh, feature on there. And uh, the um, LED uh, notification on the top is also nice. And it has some, of course, uh, cool functionality where you can actually uh, reduce the brightness of the screen by just swiping left and right on top of the notification bar. So I think overall, all around, it is the best, although it does has to have a downside. Well, in my case here, in my area, uh, it could be better in your network area. Um, Sprint download speeds were downright terrible with 4G. You can see it just cut off in between. So that's something to take note if you're within my area or if you have bad, uh, bad network uh, coverage with Sprint. Second best, of course, is the AT&T version. Um, Decent uh, download speeds at 3.3. Uh, I actually do like this uh, version. I like the size of the device. I think the 4.3 inches fits me better than the 4.5, but you know, who am I to say what you like? Uh, again, you know, very smooth, worked well. Battery life was between uh, 12 to 14 hours, which is just good. And uh, overall, but it came out as a good, solid overall second best uh, device here. And finally, the T-Mobile uh, Galaxy S2. Now, not saying it's a bad device because it's actually a great device. The downside, I think, is just the addition of that 1.5 uh, Qualcomm chip affected the battery life tremendously where it's between 8 to 10 hours on the uh, T-Mobile Samsung Galaxy S2. But on the plus side, though, you do get... Uh, uh, download speeds of up to about uh, 17 megabits per second that you saw in our speed test, uh, but also uh, taking note that I've actually gotten about 20 to 21 uh, in uh, regular use, so that's something to take note. So at least the T-Mobile version is the fastest, even though the battery life is less than the other three, and um, <clears throat> it does you, you do feel some sluggishness. I would say granted to the 1.5 uh, gigahertz Qualcomm chip. So overall. The Epic 4G Touch is our winner for this. So uh, if you guys have any questions, any comments, let us know. If you have comments about the uh, Epic 4G Touch, who won this, the uh, at t Ga Samsung Galaxy S2 device, which came in second, and of course, the super fast, but third uh, T-Mobile Samsung Galaxy S2, uh, let us know. And just leave a comment with this video or within the, the uh, versus uh, uh, posting on our, our website, Border Work with Two O's. So uh, this is Thunder Yee from Border Work saying, uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube page, Twitter page, uh, Facebook, you name it, it's all Border Work with Two O's. So thank you and always enjoy entertainment.